we are just cranking out the videos. This is awesome. I'm sure it's all really good material, too. <laughs> Doubtless. Okay. We are going to talk about Solomon skis, which are unchanged from last year. Same cosmetic, same internals. Solomon has been our fastest growing brand in the past two years. Why do you think that is? Um, I think a few reasons. Um, I think Jesse Diggins and Sophie Caldwell and Simi Hamilton don't hurt the brand at all. Um, those guys are all very visible and positive and I, mean, I think we all wish we could be them, but um, if we can't, might as well ski in Solomon. I wouldn't want to be Simi. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that would be that a little was a weird. Joke. I'm just kidding, Cindy. <laughs> that would be really weird. <laughs> anyway, um, but I think that's my, probably part of it. But also, um, I know when we have demos at Craftsbury, they're hands down the most popular ski for the majority of people. Um, Craftsbury is typically a lot of man-made snow in early December. When we're running the demo. Yeah, and uh, these skis, I think that's kind of there and there. Um, you know, ideal right. conditions. Yep. Um, they do very well there. Um, I also, we have to note that the major uptick has really come concurrent with the material redesign mm -hmm. and the new Sax 34 skate ski and the 29 classic ski. Those have been a big step, mm -hmm. a very big step from sort of a niche ski that has really good graphic design, uh, really solid marketing, and good performance when we nail it, to a great all-around ski. Yeah, for sure. Um, last year, I, I remember in particular when we had um, pretty much two identical skis, one with the, the blue base and then one with the universal base, um, up at Craftsbury, so still a lot of man-made snow, although it was a little later in the season, so there's plenty of, of new snow mixed in. Um, that blue base for us was working really well from incredibly cold conditions up to about freezing, and then the, the universal base was more plus or minus freezing conditions, and so, I mean, I, I know that that blue base in particular was, is so let's talk about this, Incredible. these model differentiations for a minute, because this is pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. In the different brands that we carry, they're set up pretty differently. Um, Fisher, for example, has three bases. Their 30 base is their clear base, and their 28 is their plus base, and their A5 is their cold base. We pick the vast majority of skis with 28 base, mm -hmm. because those are super broad range, really, really wide range bases and the cold and the wet base are narrower. Right, much more specialized. With Modsus, in the last couple of years, they put everything on one base. Mm -hmm. And they've tested other bases, but they keep coming back to this base is super, mm -hmm. uh, super stable, super reliable, keeps the speed for a lot of use cycles, so it doesn't need to be reground frequently, it holds up well. Mm -hmm. um, and so they put it on everything, and so it's only one base material, and the skis are differentiated by camber. Um, and Fisher is also differentiated by camber mm -hmm. with 902 and 812, you know, a bunch of different things. The Solomon skis have the best base program. I agree. And sure. the, they have three excellent bases. And the difference is that where Fisher and Matsus both have one base in the middle that's outstanding. I think the weak point of the Solomon lineup is their universal base. Yeah. I don't love the Y base, mostly because it's a little easy to destabilize, so when you're waxing it, it's easy to get black wax shavings. Mm -hmm. It still runs well, but it's slightly delicate compared to others. Um, the performance is good, but not exceptional. I don't feel like it's an advantage over other brands. Mm -hmm. But oh my god, the F base and cold, or the 126, their clear base and wet, they're the best bases in the industry in those conditions. I feel like they're a really meaningful advantage. For sure, yeah. yeah. So the skate skis are essentially one central reference camber, and they, they don't try to change the parameters all that much across the different models. The 
F base, the blue model skis, they do try to hold the tip and tail down and lengthen those contact areas a little bit. And uh, the universal is a little more shape in the camber. Um, what's interesting for us is that when we're looking at the wet skis, the red model 126 base skis, it doesn't seem to work that well to pick really wet cambers. We like more neutral cambers there. Is that a trade secret? Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> so we look for pretty universal type cambers. We don't change the camber specs all that much when we're picking the skis. And what this means is that uh, it's easy for your average retail shop to suit customers pretty well according to base selections. As long as they understand where the bases are going to run, if someone wants a cold ski, they can probably do pretty well with a off-the-rack blue ski as long as the P2 value doesn't get too short. I mean, there are, there are camber markers that we need to look for, but generally speaking, the, the skis are very well differentiated by the bases, and the bases are really good. Is that fair? That's fair, for sure. Yeah. Drawbacks? What do you not like about them? Um, I mean, I don't know that it's a drawback. I think it's a selling point for a lot of people as they've got really strong edge security. Mm -hmm. And so um, just either even in, in classics, on the classic side, I mean, those things just want to be pointed straight. Mm -hmm. um, and they're awesome. I think it's it's harder to slow down on downhills. Um, you kind of almost have to like put it, <laughs> you know, do a snow plow and then turn around something rather than it's not like you can kind of slide around on, on the classic skis very well. Okay. Um, going downhill and same with their skate skis. It's uh, they're very they're very edgy, which is is really great in icy conditions. Um, and on downhills too, you need to kind of step your turns rather than right. slide them very easily. Yeah. Um, so I guess it's kind of a positive and a negative at the same time. Yeah. Um, especially when you get onto their, <clears throat> I feel like their, you know, their top end, their S Lab carbon boot um, with their Pro Link binding. I feel like that connection is very solid, but that whole system is meant to be you know, have a, a flat ski and riding in one direction. Yeah. And it's hard to change out of that direction. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, the only reason it's a negative sometime for me is because it means I have to really push my knee in. That kind of tweaks it out a little bit. What I find, mm -hmm. and the, the only troubling thing about the skis that I find, is that they're super sensitive to fore-aft weighting. Well, I shouldn't say that. They're really awesome if you're neutral weighted on a flat foot. Mm -hmm. But if you get up and forward on your feet, mm -hmm. all of that edge security disappears yeah. from me. As soon as, as soon as I get front loaded so that I've got more load up here, I feel like the stability of the edge really fades and the skis are liable to windshield wiper on me yeah. in a kind of unpredictable way. And yeah. it, what's interesting for me is that with my bad knee, if I load my quad across the knee joint, mm -hmm. I get a lot of pain. I can't go deep into the leg there. Mm -hmm. So to get strength through that leg, I've got to kind of do it from the hip and mm -hmm. the glutes and stand pretty high and forward on the skis. Mm -hmm. And when I've been skiing on skis that support that position, I get very comfortable there. Yeah. And then it's difficult for me to jump onto the Solomons and I've got to kind of come back off of the position I've become. I've, yeah, to. you're totally right. I think I naturally just tend to like, when you get on the Solomon skis, you have to kind of sit back. You don't, sit, it's not even sitting back, because that's unfair. It's not like you need to be a backseat driver to ski the Solomon. Sophie is not skiing in the armchair. That's Simi true. is not a backseat driver. Those guys are super aggressive, active skiers. And, you know, they, they do really well on the Solomon skis. But even they don't kind of dance things through the forefoot the way they might have on previous brands and it just it's a, it's a little different okay so how about the classic skis what can you tell me about them so remind me again last year what changes happened they all went to the new construction last year was the first year of the new construction so that was from which models the blue and the all red all of the classic all models. of them they hadn't been before okay so that was a huge change um and um, last year, I'm trying to remember, um, thinking back, 
I guess I spent the most amount of time on the new blue model, which was is their kind of hard wax model. Mm -hmm. And um, that was really, really great feeling. It's really easy kicking. We had a lot of people at demos who really liked that, that easy kicking blue ski. My sense is that they're, they've been easy to work with when we get the selection right. Mm -hmm. And we were very careful having tested the year before not to pick skis where the pocket's too flat because there were some test skis where I felt like just standing on it, I was pointing downhill, mm -hmm. and then the front of the pocket would collapse if I moved forward and the ski would pitch up. In fact, remember when we were skiing, I crashed so hard <laughs> yeah. on that sketchy, like we were on some tacky, like soft red put kick wax. Knee through it. I put my knee through the top sheet of the ski. <laughs> yeah. But that was just me getting forward on a downhill and the ski just like stopping. Mm -hmm. Made me feel like a tourist, a beginner. <laughs> yeah. um, the, they've been really good once we've gotten them dialed in. The clister skis have been great. The clister skis are the easiest to work with, best cluster ski. If we've got to take a dedicated cluster ski and put it into a team environment mm -hmm. where it's not going to get like super special treatment and layered up just perfectly, they've been the easiest cluster skis to work with in terms of getting knockout speed and solid kick with a minimal number of adjustments. Mm -hmm. I think they've been excellent. Yeah. A lot of times when we pick like big, tall cluster skis, we really need to work with the coaches of a team to say, hey, you got to treat these skis differently from the average skis. Mm -hmm. So... They've been really good. The blue skis have been really easy when we pick them with just the right shape and carrying capacity, a couple layers of wax and you're off to go. The place I've struggled is on the universal skis. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of variation in the pocket shape and the position of the high point. Um, I like these skis when you can pick them to have a light trigger, when the, tr when the action through the pocket is really easy. Mm -hmm. and. The thing about that universal setup is you want a moderate pocket height and a moderate pocket strength so it doesn't collapse too easily. The blue, you can have a low pocket with a light trigger, you stand behind it, and then you move forward and kick. Awesome. The red, you can have this high camber that's soft up high and you climb up on it and the light impulse just makes the kick through a high position. Awesome. It's the yellow ski where you, you're high and you want moderate strength and then you want to be able to kick through it at the appropriate rate. And I feel like when we get the height just right, the end stiffness comes up too rapidly. And there's a balance I haven't totally found there. Some of them are sweet. I can feel it in my hands when I've got a really good one, but they're not the easiest to find and I haven't been able to relate it 100% to the values on the stickers. That's my experience. I'm satisfied with what we sold. I think we've put good skis out in the world, but I'm not satisfied that every pair that's out there is awesome. No comment. No. <laughs> <laughs> so the one thing I think we haven't mentioned, but I think is worth mentioning, it's not exactly the ski, but those pro leg bindings are my favorite. I, I don't Why? Know. Why do you like those so much? Because I... I don't know, but I think it's because of the bumper. It's stiffer. I think it's stiffer. I feel like there's a better, tighter connection between the ski and my foot. Mm -hmm. And I know last year... I ordered a bunch of extra stiff bumpers to put in classic skis with regular accelerator bindings to see if I could mimic that, but I'm just remembering now that I bought all those extra bumpers. I don't think I ever <laughs> You never it. tested it? <laughs> no. <laughs> so you like the security of that bumper. It makes you feel connected to the ski through the whole range of flex in the boot. I do. I feel like sometimes with uh, some of the other binding systems, it feels like I'm Floppy. Floppy, like having a, wearing a slipper, like a slipper connection rather than a, a, a tight boot connection. You like to really feel it. <laughs> That's inappropriate there. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> enough about Solomon? I think that's enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>